this is an XR 18 volt 5 amp battery and this is another one I have that's actually faulty if you test it in the multimeter it's only showing 15 volts or so or slightly less 14.8 volts and it is not taking a charge it's not taking a charge I've already tried the jump start method to try and uh, get it going but that hasn't worked so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the bad cells to show you which is the bad cells I've already tested these there's eight of these cells are very good and two of these cells very bad these two in the end are showing point less than one volt there's they're bad you know the rest i'm showing about 3.7 or 3.95 so that's very good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull out these two end cells and replace them spot well done a couple more this is the two cells that i purchased these are new cells to replace the ones that are in there they're exactly the same they're samsung anr 18650 25 hour cells and they, those two cost me 12.95 so if you have an old donor battery with good cells sometimes maybe you could solder them in but in this case i'm going to put in some new ones first things first we have to get the old ones out and the important thing about lithium cells is you know i'm working with a screwdriver here it's quite a sharp object important thing with lithium cells is not to puncture them but i have to get these this spot weld off here just to get the just to get the cells out so that's the first thing i'm going to do That's coming off nicely. Um, yeah, that's working well. That's excellent. That worked well. Bring that back a little bit. So that's that side. And this side, I'm nearly tempted to cut the tin off, cut the nickel strip off. But no, I'll, I'll try and get these cells out intact. Because um, the thing about lithium cells is, if you do puncture them, they can explode. These may not explode, since they are so bad. But fully loaded lithium cells are not, not a thing that you want to burst. So I'm going to pull these out anyway, and try and... Get them out intact. Right. So that's that. That went pretty well. So these will slide straight out. Yep, same number and all on them. That is very good. So, this is the way they go on here. I'm going to test those cells when I have them out. See what they're showing in that. The multimeter. Yep. 3.54. 3.54, that's not bad. And another hand. They're showing virtually nothing. They were the bad cells. So those away safely and 
I had originally planned when I had planned to do this video to um, solder solder these cells in. I've been advised that heat and these are not don't go well together. So what I got myself was a. Uh, battery spot welder this is how these things are made anyway this is the correct way to do it and I acquired this little device for £43 on eBay and it comes with these nickel strips <clears throat> and what you do is you spot weld them on think what I'll do first is I will spot weld to this just cut that off altogether that's probably the best way to do it Right, I've cut that off altogether, and I'm going to try and spot weld to this item here. Too many devices here, not the right device. Here we are. So, what you do is, there's two seconds of laying this, that tacks that on. Oh. Take it on straight, I think, but I can. Just shoot, put it around so you can see what I'm doing. I am far from an expert at this. I am a total novice, but I'm sure it's good fun. <laughs> Lovely. That's a good, there's a wee bit of heat there, but it's a good solid weld there. So what I have to do is tack it to the side of the batteries. What I'm going to use is this little plastic clamp to hold things in place. And I think I'm going to screw down the heat over a wee bit. To, um, you can actually screw down the intensity of this wee welder. So I'll screw it into about half what she was. Two second delay. Two second delay. That's excellent. I'll do the same here. Yeah, that's bad. That's excellent there. And a couple of wee tacks on here. This hopefully this spot welding is much safer than the soldering around batteries and then uh, hopefully it'll keep me from having lithium cells exploding in my face. So that's that. And this other side, I'll do the same. I'll maybe tack these on. Probably cut them off too. They're in the way. That's those cut off altogether now. And we could do the same again. Get a Get a clamp on it. Get a nice bit of spot weld on it. We'll do the battery. I'll do the battery side first. Will I? No. 
So maybe do this side first. I'll turn her up a bit. So she might be able to hurl a wee bit more heat. This is rated between 1 and 30. 1 and 30 watt, I can't tell you because I say I'm an amateur. Oh, that's good. That feels good there. That feels like a good bit of weld there. See on the other side. This little spot, well, there's a godsend to be honest. I think I was actually going to blow the head of myself soldering. Uh, of them batteries. I was very determined to do it, but there just was going to be too much heat. That's very, very good there now. Now, clamp this one first, and I think I'll turn down the heat in this thing. Turn it down to about 14 or 15. 15. So I'm not applying too much heat to the batteries. That's that's attached now anyway. So cut the straps off. There we are. And now we have an intact battery. It's not inside the casing yet, but I think we can do a little test by putting it in the charger now. Put that off. Right. I'll test it with the multimeter first to see what it's showing in voltage, etc. There you are. That's looking a lot better now. We're getting over 19 volts. So if I'm right, that should take a charge now. We'll put this onto the, the charger, see what happens. As you can see, that's now taking a charge. Right. And if we look at the wee LED, it's showing three bars. We'll just put it together. See, don't forget the little spring. So
There you are. We've now got a fully functional log battery. And it's taking a charge. So that's how you replace the cells and a faulty dual battery.